How's everybody doing today? I apologize. I'm driving while I'm making a video. I hate making videos when I drive, but uh, I got a two hour drive ahead of me in the snow. So I wanted to uh, talk briefly about an experience that I had with someone that brought back some memories that were kind of funny. Uh, when I was downtown here where I live, taking care of some business yesterday, uh, an old friend from the Kingdom Hall yelled my name from across the street. I haven't seen him for probably 20, 25 years. And he came running over. Um, you know, he looked, he looked, didn't look good. It looked like things have been kind of rough for him lately. Um, but you know, it was good to see him. So I canceled my next appointment and just, you know, I said, hey, let's uh, go grab something to eat. Let's talk, man. We sat and talked for probably about two hours. We caught up, uh, took some steps to try to help him get, you know, kind of realigned with where he needs to be. So I'll, I'll be real excited to see how that goes. Um, always want to help where I can. But one of the things he brought up and he started, you know, cracking up laughing was when I was very, very, very spiritual. It wasn't a long phase. I was when I was a little kid, you know, up to about 12, 13 years old. Uh, and then I, you know, wasn't at the hall for a while. But when I was probably 18, 19 years old, I forget the exact dates, there was probably a year, year and a half period where I was that guy. I was a super spiritual guy. I was witnessing to everybody. I was going to all my old friends, bringing them to the hall, bringing them to conventions. Um, so to backtrack a little bit, my father died when I was 12. I talked about it before in you know, one of my other videos. He wasn't a witness, uh, but him and my mom were married before she became a witness, but she was a witness my entire life. Uh, so, uh, but he, he was supportive of, you know, morally, you know, everything that, that being a witness stood for. He probably would have been a witness or two key things he had a problem with. One was how um, they they treated uh, disfellowship people. And then the other one was he didn't want to give up smoking. So that was his two big hurdles. So he never became a witness. But anyway, um, he died when I was 12. My mother got this fellowship when I was, I think, 13, somewhere in that range. She was away from the, the uh, organization for about two years, I think, about from, from when I was about 13 to 15. And then she went back. Uh, she was quickly reinstated, you know, whatever the minimum time is, three months, six months, whatever, when you come back, she was reinstated pretty quick. Uh, but I didn't go back with it. So during all that time, while I was away from about 13 until I think I went back finally when I was maybe the, almost 18, the, the end of being 17, I was 18 or, or I was already 18, right in that time frame. Um, but during that time, you know, from 13 to 17, 18, I was out running the streets. I was being wild, you know, I was involved in all kinds of stuff, fighting every day, uh, so selling drugs, uh, you know, just doing whatever you can imagine somebody doing out on the streets. I was out doing, my mom was working two jobs, you know, to make sure the bills was paid and she was never home. My brother was already out the house, so it was just me and her. So when she was gone, I was just running wild. So along those times, obviously I had a little group of people I was running wild with. I had allies, I had enemies, you know, so um, I was out there. So when I finally, I just, you know, cold turkey, one day said, hey, you know, things things are kind of crazy with my life. I want to go back to the hall with you. And I went back and, and I kind of didn't look back early on. And I talked about it in, in one of my other videos, too. When I did go back, I saw how wild, you know, a lot of the witness kids were. And it was like parties just like, you know, they were out, out you know, outside of the organization. Sex and drugs, all kind of crazy stuff. But uh, I ended up getting baptized. I didn't get baptized, so I was probably... 18, I think 18, maybe 19. I was supposed to get baptized at one convention. They wouldn't let me because I, I brought something up to the circuit overseer, but that's in another video too. But I ended up having to push that back to, to the next assembly, but got baptized and I was super spiritual. So I was going back to my neighborhood because uh, we had moved out the neighborhood. I was going back there talking to all my friends uh, you know, that I'd come up with doing crazy stuff with telling them, listen, man, there's a better way than this. And we talked, I was bringing them watchtowers and awakes. I was talking to them about becoming a witness. I was all for, I was 100% all in, even though in my mind, there were a lot of questions, a lot of things that I knew didn't make sense, 
but I was doing what a lot of people do. I was just suspending that disbelief and suspending, uh, you know, my, my base in reality for what I thought was the greater good. It makes sense to be a witness. I, I you know, I have good people around me, um, you know, and, and it just made more sense at that time. My mother was as happy as could be that I was coming back, uh, you know, to, to the kingdom hall and trying to become a witness again. Uh, so I got baptized, hit the ground running. I was like arguing with people. I remember there was an elder with me one day and uh, that's what made uh, the guy I, I, I met up with yesterday that I ran into. That's that's the story he told it that, you know, made it start going down this road. I was with an elder. We were going door to door. We knocked on the door. You know, how sometimes people were just real rude to you. Oh, you guys are stupid. You guys, you know, follow a call, you know, whatever he was saying. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I got heated. So I'm like, yelling back at him like who you think you're talking to we're not crazy you're crazy for not listening you know, i was like going at it i was pulling out scriptures like look at this scripture and he was trying to pull out scripture in his bible and we were i was like getting heated going at it the elder it was kind of funny i mean he was the elder but he was just looking at me like man what are you doing so he ended up having to like stop the conversation uh the guy that i met up with yesterday he was standing down on the sidewalk waiting for us with another elder and they were kind of laughing um and so the elder I was at the door with had to say, hey, you know, nice to meet you, sir. We're going to go ahead and go. I think our group's ready to go. He decided to kind of end the conversation. He didn't ask for no follow-up, return visit or nothing. He just was like, let's go. So we get back to the car. He's like, man, what are you what are you doing? And so he was. they called me Peter. So after that, the elders, you know, in the congregation, they called me Peter. And they used to joke with me and say, hey, you haven't cut off no ears today, have you? I'm talking about the Apostle Peter. But uh, they were like, you can't, like, come aggressively at people like that you can't like sit there and argue with them and i'm like nah man he's not seeing what we're saying so i'm gonna you know make him understand so i was really passionate and i guess would be the best word for it i was super passionate about it uh and about making sure that uh i got my point across uh and and you know i there was there was one convention another thing we talked about yesterday i brought like five gang members um, from my old neighborhood, I, I knew one of them real well. You know, we used to we used to have each other's back on a couple of things, uh, and the rest of them I knew, but not as well as the one. But you know, I got to talking to him, went over his house, didn't really have a study, but more just kind of sharing things with them. Sorry for the shaky camera. Uh, more kind of sharing things with them, um, and I was like, look, man, why don't you come down to this convention? We happen to be having a convention. In, in our city um, coming up like that next weekend or two weekends away or whatever um, at a big you know convention center so I said look why don't you come down to here more it's free and the, the big thing I used to say to people to, to get them to rope them in is free food as much free food as you want so this was probably like the last year of the free food before they did away with the food I don't remember what year that was but whatever I remember it was the last year of the free food um and they were like, free food, you know, and yeah, you can come get, you know, what was it? It wasn't egg and muffin, it was the muffin egg, right? The muffin egg and the uh, the, the Swiss Miss vanilla pudding and the cheese danishes, uh, the burgers. I mean, I would just, I tell them like, look, man, you can come get whatever you want. Um, you know, you can just, a lot of people used to just take their box and act like they were getting food for the whole family and they would just get a bunch of food for themselves. But, I, you know, I, I would tell them, look, you come eat breakfast and lunch free. It's free to get in. Just come learn something, man. You know I wouldn't be messing with it if it wasn't legit. So just come with me, man. Just learn more. I was really trying to convert people. Uh, and, and I thought I was going to be like a little different than the other witnesses. I was going to go into like the bad neighborhoods and pull the, pull the worst out. You know what I mean? And, and bring them to the Kingdom Hall, bring them to the conventions. So I was super duper spiritual in that time frame. Uh, so much so that, you know, uh, the guy I was talking to yesterday he was like man like I had never seen nothing like that like you were like you, you know because they had seen me in the in the city during that time I was gone they knew kind of some of the things I was involved with but it was like I you know we were kind of you know worried about being around you when you first came back and then you were like more spiritual than any of us you were like full steam ahead with it uh, so it was kind of funny you know, just reminiscing about those times. Uh, and I do remember it. I mean, I was like, I, I worked, uh, I, th 
think I worked at night back then. I had a couple different jobs. I was doing uh, janitorial work at a TV station, I think, and then I had another job. I don't remember which job. Back then, I wasn't real responsible for jobs, <laughs> with, with jobs. So I kind of bounced around from job to job when I was like 18, 19. I uh, didn't really have a career path in mind. Um, but my point is, during the day, you know, if I was working at night, I would come home, maybe sleep for, for two hours, and get up and go out uh, in the field service all day. My mother was uh, a pioneer um, by that time, because by that time, when I finally came back, she had gotten married, um, remarried to, to a brother in the Kingdom Hall. So she didn't have to work anymore. So she finally, it was always her dream, you know, to be able to regular pioneer before she had to work all the time. Um, after my, my father passed away, she was a pioneer until my father passed away. Then she ended up having to go work. And then when she got remarried, she was able to, you know, accomplish her dream of going back to being a regular pioneer. And she is still pioneering to this day. Even with COVID, she can't really uh, go out of service, but she's doing phone witnesses all uh, you know, phone witness and, uh, you know all day, every day. But um, she, I would go out with her, you know, and there, there was a little core group of people we would be out with. I actually, I know a lot of people have said how terrible field service is. Field service wasn't really bad for me. You know, I kind of enjoyed it. I enjoyed the people I was around uh, and, and, you know, during those weekdays, weekend weekend field service was a little different. It felt kind of forced. You didn't really have control over who you was with. They would just pair you up with people. But during the weekdays, it was the same core group of people, and we would go just hang out. You know, be out witnessing, stop by, get some lunch. Uh, you know, we we laugh, talk, and and I, I kind of enjoyed those times, uh, really. So um, beyond that, you know, what kind of put an end to that was I just continued. My thing was then was learning more knowledge because I knew even as a young child, things didn't make sense to me. When I visited Bethel when I was very young, I was like, man, this don't make sense. They're like slaves. They don't got no money. They don't got no food. Um, but as I got older, you know, and, and when I came back, just some of the doctrine meant more to me then. I was grown now. So I was able to reason more and, and try to understand more. And my big thing was always doing more research. So researching within the organization's uh, documents through their literature, but then also eventually outside of it. And as I started to search outside of it, which is why they never want you to do it, you start to realize things just aren't making sense. Then, you know, And I already knew it in the back of my head, but I didn't necessarily have the knowledge and the wisdom to back up my doubt. So I allowed my faith and my, and, and my belief to uh, overshadow those doubts. But as I begin to, to read more and gain more knowledge and more wisdom, then then that naturally uh, began to outweigh the faith and the blind faith and the belief that I had in the idea of you know the, what the, what the witnesses were saying was true. So as I did that, that's kind of what what one of the big things that created that transition outside of uh, being super spiritual and. and uh, I stayed for quite a while and eventually, honestly, just started living kind of a double life, you know, and, and was doing a lot of, you know, quote unquote worldly things. Um, but then coming to the Kingdom Hall and acting like everything was good uh, after that. But during that period, during that year, year and a half period, I was that dude. I was that super spiritual dude. I'm telling you. Uh, I, I would go talk to anybody. I was walking up to people on the block in the act of selling drugs. Like, hey man, let me talk to you. Let me, you know, let me leave this magazine with you. Uh, so it was just kind of funny. I just wanted to share that real quick. Uh, I had a good conversation with my mom about uh, some things. I'm gonna make a different video about that here in a little bit. But I wanted to share that real quick because I don't think I ever talked about my like super duper spiritual uh, time frame and, and kind of what what I what I was doing during that time frame. But, you know, him bringing that up to me yesterday just made me uh, reminisce about that, think about that a little bit. Um, and it was some, I mean, some good memories. You know, I don't really regret anything in my life that I've done because I feel like everything that I've done, even not related to being a witness, everything that I've done has helped me and has built who I am now. So um, I'm, I'm happy with who I am now. I mean, I, I own businesses, I'm very uh, stable. Financially, I'm able to help a lot of people, uh, and 
and I'm able to, you know, do whatever I want to do, you know, um, in life. I can do whatever I want to do. So I feel like all of those different experiences helped build me to who I am today. So without any of those experiences, I may not be who I am today. I may not be alive today, you know, without something. Um, so I don't regret anything. And so some good memories, you know, just made me remember that time period, you know, um, like I said, 18, 19 years old, and then, you know, for about a year, year and a half. And then I, I slowly started to fade away, started living my double life, and then started, you know, kind of just not coming to the hall at all, uh, except for, you know, maybe once a month, or started like I'd miss one meeting, then I'd miss two meetings, and then I'd miss a month. Um, then I uh, moved out of my mother and my stepfather's house, and then that's when it was just, you know, forget it. It was wild. I started going to a different congregation, and uh, honestly, they had a lot of girls there. So <laughs> that that was why I liked that congregation. So I started going to meetings more. Uh, you know, I was like, man, I'm coming to every meeting at this hall. Uh, but you know, I ended up just fading away from that too, and and continued to gain knowledge, continued to, to gain wisdom, understanding, and just got to the point where it just completely. I left being a witness completely alone. Um, I would still go to like a memorial here and there for for some years, you know, um, just mainly because my mom would call and beg me to do it. Uh, and, and I just didn't want to argue with her. <laughs> so I would go do it uh, and, and go to the memorial. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to share that real quick. I don't know if, you know, if you got any comments, leave it down in the comment section. If you, if you went through a, a very serious uh spiritual stage even if you had doubts like me uh you know share your experience i'm always welcome to uh, I always welcome any you know feedback uh, my email is in my bio you're welcome to reach out to me i'll be glad to talk to anybody on the phone anyone who you know is dealing with somebody wants to talk about something uh just, just wanted to share that real quick y'all have a good day